Hi everybody, your old friend Walter back at you from the workshop. In today's plane talk, it is my hope to explain a little bit about corrugated sole versus smooth sole and further continue the discussion on the three amigos here which I did a video on a while back. These are in as found condition. I wanted to test all three planes out but because the blades on these two were untouched this one since January of 1941 I'm not sure this one it's the same date or older I decided well since these planes were built a lot like Henry Ford's Model T's they were built interchangeable so why not just take the sharp blade which was the used one and try it in all three planes. And lo and behold, it fits. So this is a smooth sole. I've done nothing to this. Let's see how she cuts. All right, no cut. So therefore we have to use, for those of you who are beginners, you use the advancing knob. Now the advancing knob, if it's all the way back into the retract position, has, as you can see, it has a little bit of play. So you need to bring it forward to the advanced position and leave it there. Never retract a blade and leave it in the retract position. Always advance and leave it in advance. It holds everything together better. So what we're going to do is, with this finger, I'm making minute adjustments to the blade advance while I'm bringing it forward. There it is. There it is. Now, guaranteed it's going to be out more on one side than the other and I can feel with my finger just touching it underneath that this side, the left side, is further forward. So the way the lateral adjuster, and that's this lever, the way the lateral adjuster works is if the blade is sticking out more on the left, you push it to the left. If it's sticking out more on the right, you push it to the right. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Some people hold, hold the, the tote and do it from there. Some people press with their thumb against the blade and their index finger against the lateral. So you're getting sort of double the, uh, the leverage. She's still out a lot more on the on the left. I I can feel it. So let's give it a good squeeze. A little bit less. A little bit more. That feels better. Yeah. Now it's about even. Sometimes you can tell just by the sound of the cut. All right, so we can see now that this one, this one's planing fairly well for a, a fairly thin shaving. And that's how I usually judge my plane set, is how thin I can take the cut. See, right now I'm, I'm, I'm backing it up. All right, now I'm going to bring it forward again. until it's just starting. If I can get a, a see-through shaving on a plane that has never been touched, never been adjusted, if I can get this type of a shaving, then that plane is almost ready to go to work.
A light cleaning doesn't need much. So that's the smooth sole. Now, on to the corrugated sole. And in brief, and I don't want to get into a long winded discussion on why the corrugations are here and which is better, smooth or corrugated. I will give you my interpretation. First off, mathematically, assuming the weight of both planes is similar and assuming the surface area of the planes are similar, you do reduce surface area contact with a corrugated plane. You have less metal touching wood. However, we already said that if we assume the planes weigh the same, then now you have more weight on less metal. So you create more friction, but it is less metal. So it's a wash. They give you the same exact weight to surface reaction. So there's no benefit to corrugations in that regard. Another topic was, and it has to do with surface contact with a large piece of wood, not edge joining, but a large surface, you have a certain amount of resistance or suction between a flat surface and a corrugated surface. I don't buy that because if you're making full contact around the entire rim, both edges, the toe and the heel, and on both sides of the mouth, you are basically creating a total vacuum. If anything, I would feel this has a little bit more possibility of causing suction. From what I have read and learned over the years, I believe the real truth lies in marketing. During the period of time when planes were starting to be corrugated, we were coming out of the wooden plane era. So, every maker Okay, see now right there, I'm heavy to one side and I'm actually heavy. So I'm going to, with my finger, back off until I feel the plane blade come up and then advance so that we take up that slack. And it keeps everything nice and snug. Back to the corrugations. We were coming out of the wooden plane era. And we were going into iron body planes. And there was resistance by the woodworkers, carpenters, cabinet makers, joiners, to drag around a heavy piece of cast iron in their toolbox. They've been used to the wooden planes. And then they started using the transitional planes. Those wooden body planes with the metal frog on it. And now they're being asked to drag these around. So what, uh, what the makers did, and I don't know who came up with it first, I'm sure some tool historian out there will tell you, but somebody came up with the idea that if we put those grooves in there, it should lighten the plane, it should cause less friction, it should do this and should do that, and they use that as the marketing. No difference. There is no difference in function. 
There's no difference in durability, negligible on weight. Weight has a lot to do with the amount of metal they actually leave in the casting after they've faced all the cheeks off and the sole and everything else. So each plane varies a little bit. So I guess it comes back to that old song. If you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. So that's about it. You gotta love the way these tools work. It's the most brilliant design ever. Stanley Bailey, actually the Bailey patent plane. Stanley took it away from Bailey, so that's a whole other story. But there you go. You've got three planes, three chances to find something wrong, and all three, without doing any work to them, using the same blade, all work. So when you find an old plane, you don't have to do this because I say so, but I'm suggesting try this. Do nothing to your plane at first. Take the blade out. Take your blade assembly out. Sharpen the bevel. Flatten the back. Make sure that your chip breaker is, is meeting properly. Any questions on that, write me. Return the blade assembly, or as they are known sometimes as double irons, back to the plane. Put your, put your blade assembly back in the plane. Put your lateral adjuster up towards the center. See, this blade is actually a little longer. I had to bring that frog back up. Get your lateral adjuster somewhat in the center. Line it all up nice and square and straight. Put your lever cap on and the lever cap needs to be tight enough yet loose enough to make everything work. And then take the plane, use a little bit of oil or candle wax or something on the sole and give it a try. Okay, and once you've, once you've tried the plane in a few situations, you try it you try it on an edge like this. Then you want to try it on a flat surface. Because they, 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 they perform different. I found the word, it's perform. They perform different. So if you're planing flat surfaces, you'll find that the blade has to go a little bit further down than when you're doing an edge jointing. So like right here on this curly maple, I'm getting a little bit of shaving over to this side, but nothing on the other. Give it a little titch, a little titch more, and now I have to advance slightly. Okay. So there is potentially a situation here. I can see it the way that's cutting. Two things are happening. See how I'm getting a little bit from each side? That happens for one of two reasons. One reason is I've got that blade honed where it is either perfectly straight or somehow I've hollowed it. I'm assuming it's going to be mostly perfectly straight. The other is that the sole is high in the middle by ever so slightly. We're talking a thousandth or less. So to get super fine shavings, 
will be difficult until you know the plane is going to perform the way you want. So, for a jack plane, there we go. For a jack plane, I wouldn't do anything to this. It, look, it works perfectly fine. If this were a smoother, then I would lap the sole and make sure it is absolutely flat. Okay? See the difference? See the difference? It's pulling, it's pulling a really fine shaving, ultra fine. I can get super smooth finish with this plane. This is a four and a half, the one I did a review on. Okay? So for the work that a jack plane does, in the as-found condition, those planes are just fine. But you can tune them up over time. So my point was real simple. And you've all heard it from me before. My motto, when you get a, new, when you get a plane, For the first time in your shop, whether it's brand new or whether it's a used one, don't do anything except sharpen the blade. That's about it for today. The three amigos, they will be parting ways here because I don't have a need for them. They were brought in to show you all how they work. But um, any questions, write me. That's all for tonight. Walter out.